Good morning and welcome to my West Michigan. It's Friday. Woo! Finally. November 1st. <laughs> and when October goes. Oh, here we go. Yes. The snow begins to fly. Where's that? What's that from? Yeah, what's that from? That's a Barry Manilow song. It, oh, oh, is it wow. really? Wow. Get to the chorus so we recognize yeah. it. Okay, that was the chorus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, my gosh. Oh. Let's look outside on that beautiful oh, November that 1st pretty. morning. <laughs> Very oh. nice. Yeah. Did y'all have oh. many trick-or-treaters last night? I didn't Zero. have that many. Zero? We don't ever get trick-or-treaters ever. Ever. It's very wow. sad. I would love to. I would love to have them, but no. Well, the none. weather was frightening. Mm -hmm. You had a few. Just a few, yeah. I think ours was light, but lighter, yeah. but still a pretty good mm -hmm. number. That was mm -hmm. good. How about in your place, Sasha? I didn't. It was so crummy and so. No, and nobody came? No. Mm. It was just the weather. It Darn was just it. You of... guys are all sad sacks. Yeah. I know. <laughs> well, now that Halloween is over, it's possible your house looks a little bit like this with all that candy you didn't give away <clears throat> strewn everywhere. Are you stealing pieces of it from your children? <laughs> if you are, then you're in good company. Yeah, <laughs> nearly 80% of parents chill their, steal their child's candy. Yeah, it sounds about right. My <laughs> kids always do the Butterfingers were mine. I mean, come oh, on. Oh, well, that's nice. They picked them out and gave it to you? They did. Oh. oh. All right, well, this is all according to a new study by Spinbrush. The top stealing strategies include needing to inspect your candy for safety. Uh-huh. <laughs> Pretending the candy has gone bad. Gone bad. <laughs> bad candy. <laughs> Sneaking your favorite pieces and pretending the candy just mysteriously went missing. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. Study also be? found that hiding the candy was real popular and the places included the top of the fridge. That's where my parents put our candy. Mm. Yeah. Their bedroom, uh. kitchen cabinets, cars, and work offices. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Have you guys ever watched the, uh, I think it's Jimmy Kimmel who does he, it? He does it. Oh my gosh, when he like gets yes. all the videos and. Oh. He pretends, he has mm -hmm. parents tell their kids yeah. that they ate all their Halloween candy. Oh, and their God. reactions. And Some of the down. kids are, are like, it's okay, mom, I love you. Yeah. And then others just are despondent. Yeah, they fall to the losing floor. Their mind. Yeah. Complete meltdown. <laughs> it is really cute, it is. Yeah. Well, if you could take a pill to forget the worst day of your life, would you swallow that pill? No. Well, that mm -hmm. is the premise of research that's now being done. One day, it could be possible. What was once purely science fiction is moving ever closer to clinical reality. Researchers are working on techniques and drugs that might enable us to edit our memories or at least seriously dull their impact to make the intolerable bearable by, say, swallowing a pill to block the synaptic changes needed for a memory to solidify. A pill that could be taken hours, even months or years after the event. But researchers are warning it is indeed a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what if you took it months after said mm -hmm. event and it erased the wrong things? Right. right. Yeah. Like how do they scary. have control over which one? And I know, and I believe we are all we are all made up of, of our memories and we are our, exactly. we are our experiences. What, mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. for better or for worse. Yes. Yeah. So now, I think it's a bad I, when, idea. when you first start talking about this, I thought to myself, absolutely not, because you know, that worst day of my life shaped me. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. And it was a, an experience I was meant to have for some sort mm -hmm. of reason. But then I started thinking about, you know, people who have PTSD and so forth. And would uh, that be a really good therapy for very extreme cases? But then as you or victims of crime, right. 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 Violent crime. soldiers who come back from war yes. that just can't live with it. Um, and so I feel like, uh, I don't know. But then again, like what you're right. What if it's the wrong ones and yeah. how do they control it? More research, please. Mm -hmm. And then what if it's used for the wrong, wrong reasons? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if it's yeah. used against you? Or and it becomes like yeah, a yeah, something yeah. for war and right. all of that kind of yeah, stuff. It, it, oh, yeah. it's, that is a, you know, this is a line that's happening on General Hospital right now. Oh, it is? <laughs> is, it <laughs> really? is it? No oh, way. My goodness. Oh, oh, it's my, my guilty I pleasure. I sure do love my General Hospital. Oh, oh my wow. gosh, I didn't know that about you. That's <laughs> wow. hilarious. Wow. But we have not talked at all about the female member of Congress who's stepping down amid a sex and ethics scandal. Today is Katie Hill's last day on the job. She's represented California's 25th Congressional District only on the job for a short time before trouble set in. 
Hill recently resigned amid this ethics investigation into an alleged sexual relationship with a congressional aide, which she denies. However, she did acknowledge a relationship with a campaign staffer who was not on her congressional staff. Hill made a final speech on the floor of Congress Thursday, and she went a tiny bit scorched earth when she announced she was leaving because of a double standard. I'm leaving, but we have men who have been credibly accused of intentional acts of sexual violence and remain in boardrooms, on the Supreme Court, in this very body, and worst of all, in the Oval Office. Mm. Hill did take one final action before stepping away from her job. She voted in favor of the President Trump impeachment resolution. But she had a lot to say about the double standard that exists, uh, f you know, that, that are detrimental to women in particular. She said she's stepping down, but she refuses to let the experience scare off other women who dare to take risks, who dare to step into the light, who dare to be powerful. Mm. So she was a wow. member of that freshman squad mm -hmm. right. of people, women, elected to Congress in the last election. So she sure didn't get much time to, to no. serve. Mm -hmm. But she made kind of an impact with that last statement. Mm -hmm. Well, Chick-fil-A had a bit of an oops on social media this week. The fast food chain apparently forgot it's closed on Sundays. Oops. Yeah, it sent an email to some of its loyalty members calling all sandwich lovers, it read, some prefer it grilled, others fancy the original. No matter which Chick-fil-A sandwich you love, order yours on November 3rd for National Sandwich Day. Ooh. Problem is, this year, that made-up food holiday, November 3rd, it's yeah, Sunday. it's a Sunday. And here's the real troubling part for, for Chick-fil-A. That also happens to be the day that their rival Popeyes, mm. their chicken sandwich, remember the chicken yeah. sandwich that sold out all over the yes. country? Chicken gate. Well, that is sandwich is returning to restaurants on Sunday oh, and no. it prompted that whole chicken war over the mm -hmm. summer and Kirk you were you were really devastated I couldn't find one yeah you <laughs> tried hard are you gonna go Sunday I might actually oh wow. better go early because there'll be lines yeah mm -hmm. it's insane that everybody wants to try this chicken I just I mean I have no desire to go and check it out but and when you ask people who have tried the sandwich to explain to you like oh, what makes it so special they all say I just can't explain it. It's just amazing. Uh -huh. like, <laughs> mm. You're like, hmm. Yeah. Right. It seems like it's, it's taken them, up. that's been a while. Yeah. yeah. It's been at least two months. They had to hire extra workers. You know, there's a lot. Mm. Is that the truth? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Well, it is the latest phrase circulating among millennials and zennials, and it's throwing shade at the older generation, the boomers. Mm -hmm. How dare. <laughs> How dare you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it will not be hard for you to find because it is a trending hashtag on Instagram and TikTok, <laughs> and it's usually accompanied by a meme. What are we talking mm -hmm. about? Okay, so it basically is a comeback from the younger generations when somebody calls them entitled or soft. So when you hear, okay, boomer, <laughs> as a response, it is a culmination of annoyance and frustration by the young millennials and zeers, and it can also be used against someone if you feel like they are being closed-minded. <gasps> It's becoming so popular that you can now buy sweatshirts with the OK Boomer phrase on them. Have you heard of this? Oh, I've used it. Oh, <laughs> no. Under her breath. Under her breath towards us. <laughs> no, not true. No. I, okay, from my perspective, I thought boomers are like late 60s and yeah, up. Yeah, they are. So you guys know. So, no, no. You saying late 60s in age or late 60s in birth? Late, oh. See, I don't there's know. your there's your problem. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. Think a little harder on it. That's okay. <laughs> but you've used it. Okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> boomer. Okay, boomer. No, no, no. But I, I, when I have used it, it's just because you know it's an outdated thought or something that is you know hasn't yeah, been used forever. Yeah, but you're forever. maligning a generation. Sasha. But, but when people say, okay, millennial, or you're a millennial, you have no idea, or you're being sensitive, yes, it's, and stuff true, like it's, that. True. it's just kind of like, your clap right, back. Here we yeah. go. Mm -hmm. We got something for you. Yeah. But it's just fun. But like, I don't use it in a mean way. I use it as like sarcasm. Sitting just, all over mm -hmm. there insulting people. No. <clears throat> well, for, well, for example, one of the videos that we showed you, and, and we couldn't play it because you know, the big thing on TikTok mm -hmm. is to play music and then, you know, have the words and so forth. But um, the girl was being a cashier and she was like, oh, it's two eighty-seven, And so the woman hands her, you know, $5 and she goes, my change will be blah, blah, blah. And she goes, 
okay, boomer, I know how to do math. Oh my oh, god. So yeah. that's kind of an explanation as to why that all. I definitely feel like boomers, they you know, you already know how to do something, but they immediately assume that you don't, and so they try to do it for you, and you're like, no, I, I got it, it's fine, and so that's You think that's a generational thing as opposed to a personality trait? No, it's Where definitely... Where somebody wants you to get it right. Yes, like they don't have any faith that you can do it right, and so they just do it for But you. it's generational, yeah, it's not yeah. just... Yeah, and so I'm skeptic. like, all right, well, if you want to do it, you can do it, and then, so that's She's right. precious over there. <laughs> I love you guys. All right. Hey, we have a quick reminder for you about the weekend. Don't Ooh. forget to set your clocks back on Saturday. Mm. Kirk, this has you a little stressed oh. out. I just don't <laughs> like it being dark, dark, dark. It's just dark all the time. It'll be dark. Darkness. It'll be dark all the time now. Yeah, that it's just going to be dark. It takes me a little bit getting used dark, to dark, it. Dark, dark, dark. Yeah. It's just going to be dark. It's going to be dark all the time. Oh, I mean, Look at the little fallback. Oh, yeah. it's just going to be dark. Like it or not, Kirk, it's going to happen. It's just going to be dark, dark, dark. We're going to lose an hour of sleep. Yes. Mm -hmm. It officially happens 2 no. a.m. on, on. Are we going to lose No, down? gaining. Gain. We're gaining we're gain an hour. What's sleep. happening, Kathy? Yeah. yeah, we're falling back. We're okay. falling back, so we'll gain an hour. So there Yay. you go, Kirk. You'll get an but extra hour. It's still hour. just going to be dark. It's going to be dark, dark. It'll be dark when you wake up. It'll be dark when you go to work. It'll be dark. When, it's just going to be dark. And it, and it dark, officially dark, dark. happens 2 a.m. on Sunday. So a lot of people, you know, 2 a.m. Sunday. Yes. So when you go to when you go to bed Saturday night. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be dark. <laughs> It's just gonna be dark. Darkness. Come I on. wanted to ask Sasha though. Yeah. Do you ever have you ever had a set of clock back? Because you have like your phone. Oh my, yeah, my that phone does it. Automatically, automatically does, it. does it. My alarm clock Adam automatically does it. So a lot of things automatically do it. Do you have you ever? When I was in middle school, I still had an alarm. So yeah, I said it back then. But yeah, I well, just well, you've got on a microwave phone. or an oven with a clock on it or anything like that. No, I just I. I rely on Because those you still have to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I was just wondering if this is one of those things that's just kind of phasing out where people don't have All to right, worry about Boomer. I can't okay, tell Boomer. time. I don't know how to tell time. <laughs> well, that we know. All <laughs> right. Unfortunately. Well, I'll tell you what time it is. 